Do you want to know how to create 100 designs in 10 minutes? Then you are invited for a treat today. Maggie has agreed to come over and help us out with another tutorial where she's going to explain how she used data-driven design to speed up design creation. And uh, if you like more content like this, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that uh, notifications button. Hi, I'm Everson from uh, DTG Merch, where we cover all aspects of uh, DTG printing, t-shirt business from uh, design to print on demand, and we also help you with the DTG printing technology. Today, Mike is going to show us her method on how to create 100 designs in less than 10 minutes. This method is suitable to create designs for print-on-demand platforms and also for direct-to-garment printing. A good example for data-driven designs uses variable data in Photoshop. It can be used to scale designs fast and easily, but don't worry, it is easier than it sounds. And now, let's have Maggie to explain her uh, trick on uh, how to do 100 prints in uh, less than uh, 10 minutes. Hi everyone, Maggie here. Today I am going to show you a little trick how you can create 100 designs in less than 10 minutes. So the first few minutes of this tutorial I am going to use to create a few decorative elements in Procreate. I created a canvas with 4500 by 5400 pixels and 300 dpi. And I set up the drawing guide with a mirror effect. If you already have any clip arts, you can use those and skip this step. And I decided to go with some Halloween art since it's October. Now, this is not going to be the most elaborate design I ever did. But the aim for this video is not to create the next bestseller, but to show you how you can quickly create hundreds of designs. Just be a little bit cautious and do not flood print-on-demand platforms with thousands of scaled designs. Some of them don't appreciate that very much. But still, if you are a little bit more creative than me in this example, this technique can be used to create interesting designs. Once I'm done drawing, I'm going to airdrop the file to my MacBook Pro. And I open it in Photoshop. I want the end result to be printed on a black t-shirt. So I am going to add a solid colored layer and turn it into black. And I'm going to put the white overlay on the design elements I created in Procreate. So now let's go ahead and add some text. Our design is going to have two parts. The first part is going to say, the scariest girls are called, and this part is going to stay the same for all 100 designs. The second part is going to be variable. In here, we are going to automatically add one of 100 girl names. All the settings that you are going to apply to this layer will also be applied to all 100 names. So you can change the font and the font size and even add some different colors if that's what you want. Now I'm going to select all the text layers and make sure that all the text is properly aligned. Now, the next step is to import the variables, in our case, the girls' names. So, I open Google Tables in my browser. Make sure to start at A1 in the first row in the first column. I'm going to title the row name. Underneath, I'm going to copy a list of 100 girls' names.
Next, I'm going to export as comma separated values, also known as a CSV document. You can also use other programs like Excel, but Excel has the annoying habit of adding too many commas. If you do so, you have to manually remove the extra commas from your CSV file. Otherwise, you will get an error when you try to import the file into Photoshop. Google Tables export the CSV correctly. That's why I always choose to use it. It's free and it works. And now let's go back to Photoshop. To import the names, we go to Images, Variables, Define. On the top in Layers, you can see all layers of your document, so make sure it's set on Name. Check Text Replacement and type the name of the variable exactly like we had it in the CSV file. In my case, it's Name again. Then go to Next and import the dataset. As you can see, it automatically adds all 100 girls' names to the design. And using the arrows, you can preview them all. Now, you can still go back to that layer and adjust it. For example, if the font size is too big and the name doesn't fit, you can always adjust that. And now let's go ahead and export our 100 designs. As a first step, we need to turn off the background layer to get a transparent background. Then go to File, Export, Dataset as Files. Unfortunately, we can only export as BSD files. But if you are going to print them directly, most of the RIP softwares should be able to process these files. If you want to upload the files on a print-on-demand platform like Merch by Amazon, you will need to transform them into PNGs. And I will show you in the next step how to do that. So as you can see, it is now exporting all 100 designs. And if we go to that folder where we saved them in and start the preview, you will see that it really created all 100 designs and that it replaced the name in each one of them. Now, to save them as a PNG, you need to open one of the PSD files we just created in Photoshop. To transform all the files into transparent PNGs, we need to create an action. Go to Windows, Action. Then let's create a new folder and I call it New Actions. And I create the new action and I call it Batch PSD to PNG. Now let's press Record and then show it what it has to do. We go to Save As. And first I'm going to specify which folder I want my PNGs to be saved in. Then I'm going to switch the format to PNG. And I press save. And to save some time I'm using large file size. Now go back to the actions menu and stop recording. And to transform all our PSDs into PNGs, we go to File, Automate, Batch. Make sure that the correct action is set in play. Choose a source folder and make sure that it's set to save and close in the destination. All you have left to do is press OK and it will automatically transform all PSDs in that folder into JPEGs. And as you can see, we successfully created 100 t-shirt designs in 10 minutes, depending on how fast your computer can export them. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. That was a fantastic tutorial, wasn't it? Thanks Maggie for your help once more in our channel. Using one variable that changes is the easy way to work with this method, but you can also change several variables at the same time and add different image material. And if you like us to create another tutorial with this more advanced technique, for example, to create team t-shirts, let us know in the comments below. And uh, if you enjoy t-shirt design, maybe you will also like the other videos in the playlist, link it on the screen. And that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. 
take care of yourself, be good and see you in the next video.